Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news of the day. The topic for today's big news is the recent allegations of war crimes against Russia and Ukraine. In this short and crisp analysis, we will understand what is a war crime. We will also understand who can be prosecuted under these war crimes and what is the institutional mechanism that can pursue and prosecute for these war crimes. But before we do that, I am delighted to announce that Baiju's exam prep IAS is coming up with two new initiatives. The first is the crash course that will help you target preliminary examination of 2022. This crash course will cover the entire syllabus of UPSC. It will begin from 5th of April and end on 24th May. It is a 50 day crash course that will help you target the prelims of 2022. All you have to do is to download this app called Baiju's Exam Prep Application. The entire program is free. It's only available on this application. So what is this crash course going to offer you? A 50 day revision program, a daily revision plan, a time bound revision of current affairs. All these revisions will help you prepare better for the prelims. There will be daily mock tests to test your level of preparation. Also these tests will be discussed and analyzed by leading IAS trainers of Baiju's. Another announcement is the weekly current affairs in which places and news will be discussed every week. These places will be discussed comprehensively by Chetan sir and these videos will be available every Saturday. So don't miss these two initiatives. Okay, so let's go back to our discussion. See the topic is in the news which is the Russian war crimes in Ukraine because recently we have seen images where mass graves have surfaced. For example, in a town called Bucha in Ukraine, there have been images of dead bodies in mass graves. Likewise, other countries have accused Russia of committing war crimes in Ukraine. For example, the United States has said that Russia has destroyed buildings, it has destroyed schools, hospitals, critical infrastructure, civilian vehicles, shopping centers and ambulances. Also UK said that Russia has used indiscriminate violence and tactics in Ukraine. Even Ukrainian officials themselves have said Russia has attacked civilian facilities. For example, they attacked a theater and killed many civilians. The theater is in the besieged port of city of Maripol. So apart from these allegations, there has been also evidence that Russia has used cluster bombs. Even some have said the war itself is a war crime. Why? Because the invasion that Russia has launched on Ukraine is an aggressive warfare. So many experts believe that even if we don't consider this evidence, the war itself amounts to war crimes in the first place. Now let's understand what is a war crime. How do we define it? See, war crimes have been defined under many treaties. The main treaty is Geneva Convention. This treaty lays down that civilians cannot be attacked during a war, nor can be the infrastructure that helps civilians to live. So the infrastructure like schools, like hospitals, which is vital to life, cannot be attacked during a war. Some weapons cannot be used because that will cause damage to the civilian population. For example, anti-personal landmines, or chemical or biological weapons. Besides, there are also rights for prisoners of war. For example, the sick, the wounded must be cared for. They cannot be left to die. Even injured soldiers have the rights. Other guidelines include that you cannot indulge in torture. It's prohibited. Also genocide. You cannot eliminate a group of people. You cannot just wipe it out. So if there is a deliberate attempt to destroy a specific group of people or carry away genocide, that is prohibited under this law. There are other offenses which amount to war crimes. They are called crimes against humanity. These crimes are murder. If you rape, if you persecute a group of people or if you indulge in mass persecution of a group. So who can pursue these war crimes? Or why can you pursue these war crimes? And who can be prosecuted under these war crimes? And who can be prosecuted for these war crimes? Let's find out. See, these war crimes can be investigated by all the countries. Every country has a duty to do that. In fact, some nations can do more, some can do less, but every nation can do. For example, 
UK police officers have offered to gather evidence against Russia in Ukraine so that you get an idea of Russian violence in Ukraine. Before this Russian invasion, historically, war crimes have been pursued and prosecuted. There have been tribunals during World War, tribunals have been established. After that, also, tribunals have been established to investigate war crimes. For example, during Yugoslavia, also during Rwanda's war of 1994, in which many civilians were killed, there were massacres. There were tribunals established to investigate these crimes. Likewise, such tribunals can be established to investigate the Russian crimes in Ukraine. Apart from that, there are also other institutions in which these cases can be pursued and people responsible for these crimes can be prosecuted. These are International Criminal Court and International Court of Justice. These two institutions have the responsibility to uphold rules of war. Rules of war are that one does not have to indulge in war crimes. But the problem is International Court of Justice can only prosecute states. It cannot prosecute individuals responsible for war crimes. To do that, you have to go to the International Criminal Court. So only International Criminal Court can investigate and prosecute individuals who have indulged in war crimes, not the individual states. This court is the modern successor of Nuremberg trials in 1945. See what happened at Nuremberg after the Second World War is people were tried for war crimes. Who were these people? You know that during the Second World War, Nazis in Germany, a party run by Hitler, killed millions of Jews and indulged in war crimes. Now these trials were established to prosecute individuals who were responsible for those war crimes. Something similar can be done to prosecute Russia as this International Criminal Court is a successor to those Nuremberg trials. Cases can be also pursued in this court. But can ICC prosecute offenses in Ukraine? Can it hold individuals responsible for war crimes in Ukraine? One British lawyer who is a ICC International Criminal Court's chief prosecutor Karim Khan says there is a reasonable basis to believe that Russia has carried war crimes in Ukraine. So all investigators have to do is to look at the present allegations of Russia and investigate whether those allegations are true or not. Now in fact these investigations can go back to the past, not only look at the present allegations but also can go back to 2013 when Russia invaded Crimea. It's alleged that Russia also committed war crimes during that time. Now, if they gather the evidence, then what will happen? This evidence can be presented to the International Criminal Court judges and they can be requested to issue warrants against the individuals who are responsible for these crimes and bring them to trial at The Hague. But what are the limitations to this prosecution? See, there are limitations to its power. The court does not have its own police force. It has to rely on the police force of other states. Even if the court passes an order, it does not have its own police force to arrest those individuals. It will have to rely on the individual states to arrest those suspects. But this ICC can also prosecute offense of waging aggressive war, which is the original war crime committed by Russia, as some have alleged, that the invasion itself was unjustified, that the Conflict is beyond military justification. The idea that it was done in self-defense cannot be presented here. This idea had itself developed in Nuremberg where the question was raised whether individuals can be held responsible for the crimes that were committed in the name of Hitler. But the judges were convinced and said that individual leaders have to face the trial so that they can be tried for crimes against peace. But here is a problem. Russia is not a signatory to the court like United States. So it can technically deny its authority. Also, Russia is a member of the UN Security Council. UN Security Council theoretically can ask ICC to investigate these war crimes. But again, 
Russia is a powerful nation. It, it's a permanent member of the Security Council. It can veto that investigation. What can be done now outside these courts? The, the countries can engage in diplomacy and also bring out some international agreements which can discourage Russia to stop the war and also stop these war crimes. And as I already mentioned in the beginning, we have precedent from history where one time tribunals have been established. Such tribunals can be again established to prosecute the specific crimes of aggression in Ukraine. With this, I would like to end this video. Thanks for watching.